ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here, and welcome to How to Mine Cryptocurrency with Your Laptop. So without a doubt, this is one of the most frequent questions that I receive on my channel. Anytime I make a mining video, uh, I usually get a lot of questions of, can I mine this with my laptop, or I'm having trouble mining this with my laptop. So I'm gonna knock out a whole bunch of questions in this video. And I'm also gonna warn you guys that mining with a laptop can destroy it if you allow your laptop to get too hot. So mining cryptocurrency uh, takes a lot of electricity and usually maxes out your hardware while you're doing it. And laptops suffer from overheating much more than a desktop would. And I have a laptop that I also mine with as it's on most of the time anyway, so I figure why not. However, I have a gaming laptop and it has some turbo fan features on it, so uh, the fans move very, very quickly and it, it's very loud, but it keeps itself cool. So first and foremost, I'm gonna show you guys a few apps, uh, programs that are going to show you the temperature and what you have in your computer so that you'll know what you're working with and you'll know how hot your computer is getting so that you can take appropriate action against that. Also, I'm gonna show you some ways to blow some dust out of your computer and make sure that your computer is nice and clean and show you some stuff about that. And then I'm gonna go into NiceHash because NiceHash Legacy is easily one of the most user-friendly and accepting of most hardware programs that I've used. So it's likely that your, your, your computer will actually work with it and be able to mine cryptocurrency. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So the first thing that you wanna get is GPU-Z. So I'll put the link in the description below so you can take that and you're gonna to wanna to download GPU-Z. So when you bring this up, you're, you're initially gonna get this and it shows only one of your video cards in this case. Oh no, I can actually click on my other video cards. And the sensors here show it how hot it is at the moment. It's only 49C right now. And that's a little warm for just sitting around idle, but I have my computer in three-way SLI, so it's very close together. So my stuff runs a little bit hot naturally, but 49C at the moment, not too bad. So you'll be able to see it with that. Normally I use EVGA Precision. You can get that from Steam and you can actually overclock your cards and control the fan speed with on most cards with it. So I actually usually don't use this program, but it's good for you guys. And for some reason I minimized, but either way, it's pretty good. And you'll be able to track how hot your, your GPU is getting. And it shouldn't really get over 80 to 85. If, if, if it's getting 80 or 85, particularly on a laptop, you need to definitely cool, uh, cool your laptop down. And so my laptop, when the turbo fan is on, running nice and cool, it runs, the CPU runs about 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. And my GPU runs about 68 to 70, which is pretty warm, but it is a laptop and it has an inherently compact design so it doesn't have much airflow, but that's okay. And it runs just fine doing that. Another program you can check out is SpeedFan, and it doesn't work on every single computer, but you're able to control the, sp the fan of your uh, CPU and possibly GPUs with this as well. But I know for sure with the CPU, and if your computer is running hot, your laptop is running way too hot and higher than the values that I just told you for my CPU and GPU, then definitely crank up the speed. If you have to go to 100% fan speed, that's fine while you're crypto mining. It's gonna sound really loud and, and obnoxious, but trust me, a loud fan is better than a super hot laptop. Because if you run your laptop too hot for too long, it can definitely shut down and never turn back on for you. Most computer hardware nowadays is pretty resilient. Uh, aside from, I would say, MacBooks and, and Apple products, they tend to break down a little bit more, but most, most hardware is pretty resilient, and if it gets way too hot, a lot of hardware just automatically will restart itself or shut down, but I wouldn't trust that with your laptop. To, I wouldn't trust that with my laptop for, for anything, really, so I just make sure that I keep it nice and cool. So SpeedFan is a optional program for you in this case. So Core Temp I do have here, and it's all minimized down here. So when you download Core Temp, I'll put the link in the description below as well, and for SpeedFan. Well, actually, you can just Google SpeedFan because I didn't, I didn't have a link up anyway. But uh, with Core Temp, you're able to see your CPU temp. So the original one I was showing you was GPU-Z, and that shows you your GPU temperature. And this will show you your CPU temperature, which mine is uh, on, I, and I'm doing this on my desktop as well, so the values are gonna be a little bit lower than what you might see with your, your laptop. 
Now, your laptop might not have a GPU in it, although every computer has technically has a GPU. Uh, when you download this program, the GPU-Z, I'll bring it back up here. If you see something with Intel here, uh, like an Intel HD something or other graphics card, it means you pretty much can't mine cryptocurrency with your GPU. Now, I have heard of cases of people getting Intel GPUs to actually run, but it will, it will be extremely underwhelming and basically useless. So you need an AMD or an NVIDIA GPU. Uh, in this case, I have a GTX 1080. You won't have a GTX 1080 in your laptop, most likely, unless you have an extremely expensive one. Uh, but you might be surprised. You might have an old AMD or GTX, um, NVIDIA GTX. I have a GTX 675 MX in my laptop, and it does just fine. Uh, but check this out, and if it's an Intel, Really, I wouldn't even bother with your GPU in that case, and I would just move on and uh, just look at the core temp of your CPU. So now moving on once again, and this is a little irrelevant in terms of crypto mining, yet it is at the same time. Of course, so you need cool temperatures, and this is just, you don't need to go here. This is just to show you what it is. I could have just Googled a picture of this, but if you happen to have an air compressor at home, Air compressors are absolutely my favorite way to clean out a computer. My desktop, I do it uh, once every couple months. And with my laptop, I do it once every few months or so. And so if you hook up a blowing attachment to, uh, to an air compressor and you put on this attachment right here, which usually every air compressor ends up coming with, or you can just go out and buy it. And it produces way more uh, wind force, if you will, air force, um, than duster like those cans of, of duster and compact air uh, way way better they blow those out of the water so if you have an air compressor uh, stick it next to your your fan and just shoot it into your laptop and you, you would be amazed at the amount of dust that's going to come out of your desktop or your laptop they're absolutely amazing can't recommend them enough i've been doing it for years and years cleaning out my computers with air compressors and then your computer just seems to run faster and nice because all the dust is away and the fans don't have to work as hard. So it's really nice. Another option uh, that I highly recommend is a laptop cooler. So this is a laptop. This is kind of a fancy one that I brought up here, but I actually have two of these and they're very unfancy ones, if you will. Basically, all it is is a laptop or excuse me, a USB table in which that your laptop will sit on and then it runs two fans and actually just is powered with USB usually. Uh, this one might be a plug-in. No, it's a USB port conveniently powered by USB. So I have a couple of these and they work pretty well. So your laptop sits on them and then you just plug it into the USB on your laptop. And then so you have some extra fan power running and they work okay good. So definitely make sure that your, your, your temperatures are, are lower. So the next thing we wanna do is actually get our mining program. And what I choose for you guys is NiceHash Legacy. And I understand that there's a little bit of animosity towards NiceHash since the hack, but in my opinion, they're actually doing a really good job of recovering from that hack. And on January 31st, they're gonna announce whenever they're gonna start paying people back. And they also lowered their internal wallet requirements to 0 0.001 so every time you're mining as every time you manage to mine 0 0.001 bitcoin with their miner it's going to deposit to their wallet uh, to their internal to your internal wallet on NiceHash, and then you can just immediately send it for free and instantly to coinbase from there you can also mine to whatever wallet you would like but you have to mine a lot more so a lot of people switched over to their internal wallet which sort of looks like this. You just sign up and then you'll have your internal wallet and you take your mining address. So once you have this program here, you're just gonna download it, the 1.816. Uh, and once you have that, you're gonna have this. And the first thing you wanna do is just, um, it, it'll be probably worker one automatically in there. It doesn't really matter what you have your worker name, but you wanna take your address from your nice hash once you sign up on the website and you find your wallet and you take this and just copy and paste it into here. So then that may, would mean that you're mining to the internal wallet of NiceHash. And I understand they were hacked, but in this case, they lowered the requirements quite a lot to actually deposit into their, into their wallet. And then they also implemented free Coinbase transfers. So every time you get paid 15 to 16, $20 or so worth of Bitcoin, you can just transfer it right to Coinbase immediately for free. So it's 
not too bad. It's actually a pretty good deal. So put that in there and you'll have that. Also choose the closest service location to you. And then you want to benchmark. So now you're going to see these on, on my screen here, the, the 1080, the 980, and the 980. But if you have a laptop, likely you're not going to see those. If you do have an AMD or an NVIDIA GPU, you will see it here. Uh, you won't have three of these because I have three GPUs in my desktop. But if you don't have a GPU at all and you had the Intel GPU, as I, as I discussed earlier, in GPU-Z, you won't see anything here, and it won't be able to pick up your GPU. It won't even find it, and you'll just have a CPU on here. So if that's the case, if you just have a CPU, what you do is you just select this, make sure that's selected there, and then these two, and then do a quick or, or standard and hit start. And it will start to um, benchmark your CPU, and you'll get your speed out of it. And then once that's all done, you can just close that out and then you can start mining. And I just want to show you guys real quick what happens when you actually start mining and how fast your computer will heat up. And just imagine a laptop, how much more it would heat up than uh, a desktop computer with uh, a, a liquid cooled CPU and air and a fan on it. So let me just show you how quickly uh, GPUs can actually heat up. So 49 degrees right now, and this is just on my 1080. I can switch it over to my 980s, but we'll just look at my 1080. And then we'll also look at my processor. So right now it's just sporting about 42, uh, 44 degrees Celsius. And so let's let her rip. It'll take just a moment to kick in. And like I said, at uh, 0 0.001 Bitcoin, which is actually just 1.0 on, on this one, on this particular balance. So it's only about... Uh, about $15, it'll it'll pay you out. And it usually pays out at four in the morning. Uh, so if you had reached the requirement, the balance requirement before four in the morning, then you'll actually, um, then you'll actually be paid at four in the morning and you can transfer it out. So right now my computer apparently does not want to mine because I am recording at the moment and it must be very, very upset for some reason. So it's not going to do it. So don't worry about it. But right, but if it will work for you, and it always does work for me, as you can see, my balance currently is 1884, and uh, just in a few hours of after recording this, I'll be I'll be paid that um, 18, 19 dollars or so there. So normally that would start heating up pretty quickly, and you would see my temperatures rising, um, like that hit song, and everything would be okay. So uh, laptop mining is is essentially the exact same as mining with uh, with a desktop PC. However, uh, the reason why I chose NiceHash Legacy is that it usually is really accepting of, of varying types of, of, of older GPU models. So for example, the NiceHash 2.0, the spiffy looking one, the other one that you can download, for example, on, on my laptop, it will not find my GTX 675 MX. However, NiceHash Legacy does find it, and I'm able to actually mine with it on Legacy, but I'm not able to mine with it on 2.0. So it's a little weird, so that's why I chose NiceHash Legacy. It's uh, a bit more compatible, if you will. And you just have to watch your, your temperatures and make sure they don't get any higher than basically what I, what I said earlier. So my CPU is usually 65 to 70 while mining, and my GPU is 68 to 70, and that's not too bad. If you're getting close to 80s, or, or higher, uh, then it's pretty bad and you need to find some uh, more clever ways to more clever ways to cool down your laptop. Maybe put it next to the AC, maybe put it over a register if you have central air or something like that. Uh, put a fan on it, put extra fans on it. Make sure your laptop stays cool. Uh, and just also know that laptops are much slower than desktop PCs, even, even equivalent desktop PCs. Uh, just the hardware is just much slower. It uses less wattage overall. So it's not going to be particularly impressive if you really want to mine and mine quickly and well. Let me try mining one more time here uh, for the video. I doubt it's going to work after it didn't work. And uh, maybe the my mining program must have uh, 
upset it a little bit or nice hash is down at the moment one of the two pretty good timing of course for a video but either way uh, i just wanted to go over laptop mining with you guys because i get that question a lot i get the question of can i mine this so with mining use nice hash legacy because you can always mine crypto night no matter what if you're trying to mine with vertcoin one click miner i made a video on that or if you're trying to mine mona coin with just a cpu it's simply not going to happen that particular algorithm that creates um, that creates that coin uh, is absolutely terrible on a CPU. So if you just have a CPU or um, or a low powered laptop or something like that, Nice Hash Legacy is a pretty is a pretty good choice because it's going to mine Kryptonite no matter what, and Kryptonite is is easily mined on just about any device, CPU or GPU, and you'll get pretty good results out of it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time.